Micah, you ask me why I cry out loud. Why I don't put on a good face and prop up the crowd. Why, you say, can't you just realize that things are getting better and have a little hope? Your counsel is to remember the glory of Zion and cope. Turning from the sight of now to the promise of then, God, you say, has not perished and the time will come when he will certainly deliver us. But Micah, man, the news does crush. It pounds and grinds and each cycle finds more weight and burden that presses on us. The stresses of lust, the truth of power abused and revealed, covers blown, once concealed, backroom deals and NDAs, nuclear weapons, trauma-laced days. Do I hope beyond hope that someday we'll see better? I know I should. Write God some love letter. But the fact is, sometimes I feel like we are in heaps of ruin out in that open country. Like stones have been poured down and our foundations have been laid bare. So Micah, I hear you, man. I really do. But right now there's some stuff that we've got to get through. With these walls coming down, maybe now people will see that the American dream was built for me. And if you aren't quite this male or white or well, then this place can be horror, fright, and hell. And Micah, you ask, is there no king in you? And brother, the fact is the king is in me through and through. I've got too much desire to rule. Too many kingdoms I feel I need to put down because of civil unrest. Too much power, too much beating my chest. Yeah, that king is in me. It's captivity. I'm trapped inside of the bars of my own needs for power. And when I don't have it, I'll use the king's name. Stake the king's claim. Play the same game. Fan the same flame and call it destiny manifest and so I confess why do I cry aloud because too many voices tell me to stay proud to speak first and listen rarely to name it to claim it and stand squarely in whatever space I want <laughs> if it's mine then I'm here and I'm here and it's mine and I'm here so I get more, whatever, whoever, any open door. Micah, have pangs hit me like a woman in labor? No. No, they have not. Those cries yield life through struggle. These tears are because I know I've smuggled the words of scripture into my own pockets for my own use. Like a thief, I have taken the power they loose. So here's what I can offer, brother. That when that king in me perishes or has repented, and when my life has turned from all that he represented, call me then to talk of Zion, of that land of promise and sweet fruit. It is not until I'm empty that hope will root. And Micah, Oh, one thing more. Many cry, man, because they have been shot down or groped. Many still remember the trees and the ropes. Many have called out in the actual pain of birth, their bodies full of power and grace, time bending the pace of life emerging as flesh. So before you go asking those questions to others, do some work, man, and realize you are not the same as your brothers and sisters and those who labor out beyond our words. Micah, some cry... Because crying is right, given what happened that night. And because by morning at dawn, the tears must be gone so that breakfast can be made for hungry mouths and real work can get done. This world is nearly more than many can take, but lives are at stake. And so they will rise and resist. And so I insist, Micah, come at me, if you will. But most others have already had their fill.